Welcome to my sewing room. We have such an exciting show for you today. I have as my very special guest, Chris Tryon. Chris is Director of Education for Elna USA, and she has brought some fabulous things to share with you. Look at this magnificent doll, dressed in the most glorious doll christening dress I think I've ever seen. Beautiful machine embroidery, and it's, it has the go days, and a beautiful slip and a bonnet, all of the embellishment done by machine. Now I'm going to move this beautiful baby right over there and show you a real christening dress also with all of the embroidery done by machine. This is also a Godet, a curved Godet christening dress. Beautiful netting on the collar, wonderful ecru laces, and the embroidery is all done by machine. And for those of us that love hand and machine embroidery, isn't it nice to know that we can get the look of hand with the sewing machine? I especially love this white on white machine embroidery. Now, look at this wonderful table linen. Isn't this fabulous, done with the several different shades of antique uh, lace? And then this beautiful, beautiful white on white embroidery. And by the way, this is made out of a linen, which I think is pretty. And I also like the use of two different colors of lace. You know this is the lingerie series. So here we have a beautiful camisole, one of our patterns for the series, with some tucks around the top and the bottom, and a beautiful, beautiful white on white machine embroidery. We have another and very unusual version of the camisole. This one has netting over the top of our camisole for the series with some machine embroidered flowers and ecru and some pretty, very fancy rayon lace on the bottom. What an exciting idea with the netting over the camisole. Here is another fabulous camisole with, it's, it's really pajamas, camisole with very long tap pants. This has the double needle pin tucks down the front with a real interesting machine embroidery stitch right on top of the double needle pin tucks. Another beautiful camisole, this one done out of silk dupioni with beautiful double needle pin tucks around the top, so very interesting. And then here is a short version of our kimono, simply done in the beautiful pleats that go around the kimono, all ready to go over the little camisole and the tap pants for a wonderful lingerie outfit. And now come on over to the technique boards with me where I'm going to share with you some really exciting things to do with pin tucks. We have some really new ideas for pin tucks, tucks, and double needle pin tucks. First, this is a release tuck, and this is a folded tuck. Oh, about uh, a little bit over a quarter of an inch wide. And you see, when I say release tuck, the tuck only goes so far down. Here is a set of double needle pin tucks, so pretty and always used, or nearly always used on my vintage clothing. This is a wonderful way to get a raised look on a pin tuck. You simply cord it. Now, this is interesting. These are stitches you can use to go on those folded tucks. This stitch may be a little bit too stitchy. This one may be a little bit too wide, but these three probably are just exactly right for this really new technique I'm going to share with you. Now, if you want to do the, the stitches on top of the folded tucks, first draw your lines, however part you want them, and then do your decorative stitching. Now, here comes the magic. Do a fold on the right-hand side of the stitch. Just simply press it and fold it, and then pull it in the width you want and stitch in your tuck. Do you see how wonderful that is to have the decorative stitches on the folded tucks? Now here's another little new technique which I'm so excited about. Go ahead, draw the lines, run your decorative stitch on the lines, and then, and this is so exciting, take your double needle and do your double needle pin tuck right on top of the decorative stitching you've just done. The first one here is a corded double needle pin tuck, and the next two are just simply double needle pin tucks on top of your decorative stitching. Now, the lady that invented these two techniques is my guest today, Chris Tryon. Chris is Director of Education of Elna USA. Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. It's a pleasure to be here. I brought an exciting technique. 
I think it's it exciting. It is very exciting. <laughs> what I did was I thought pin techs are really great, but why can't we jazz them up a little bit? So what I did was I played around with my decorative stitches, and I've placed a decorative stitch on my fabric and then created my t pin tucks for a beautiful look. First thing that I did was I marked my fabric for my placement of my pin tucks. And then I took my decorative stitch, and as you can see, I have started a number of rows of stitching them to the point that I've marked where I want my release to start. So I'm just going to finish this row real quickly here. Such and a on my stitch. Yeah, exactly. On my foot, I have a small triangle, and what I'm doing is lining up the triangle on my foot with a line on my fabric, which gives me perfect alignment every time. No crooked pin tucks. <laughs> You know, I okay. love the, diff the fact that you can use a lot of different types of stitches. Exactly. And this is just exactly. built-in machine stitches. Exactly. This is not anything think, out of the embroidery And I think world. people tend to forget of what they have available to them on their That's machine right. alone and the creativity right. that they can come up with. Right. Okay, so here are my rows of my decorative pin tucks. I've got them all marked. My next step that I did was I simply took the edge of the pin tuck and folded it. Uh -huh. Okay, so now I have my first fold. The next thing that I'm going to do is, you can see I have a couple of them already started, is I actually want to select a straight stitch on my sewing machine. And I want to take a small stitch length of about 2.0 or 1.8. I'm going to take my folded pin tuck, like this, and I am going to simply align the edge of my foot with the edge of my fabric and with the straight stitch, stitch down the left hand side of my decorative stitch. Now for stitching purposes, I do have purple thread in the machine. I would use matching thread uh -huh. or a complementary uh -huh. thread um, for my pin tucks rather than um, the, the contrasting thread. And I'm just going to lock my stitch at the end so that it's secure. And there I have created a tuck. That is that the easy. most fascinating. And Chris, it really is a brand new technique. In <laughs> all of my years of sewing and heirloom sewing, I have not, not seen, seen this. Anything. So I think our viewers always like new and exciting, Good. Good. especially ones that can be used with stitches that are built in that aren't, you know, terribly They're, fancy. Or in machine embroidery, which not everybody has. Not available. everybody has that. So this is a way for them to create something that is exciting as machine embroidery without having those it capabilities. It really is. Oh, Chris, thank yeah. you so much. And now Chris has some more lovely lingerie with some more wonderful tricks just for you. Chris, I just love the camisole you've done. Tell us all about oh, your fancy pin tucks. <laughs> it's been my pleasure. Um, in the earlier segment, I talked about creating decorative pin tucks, and I've done the same thing here, but what I did differently was I created a corded pin tuck rather than the release pin tuck. So if you don't like release pin tucks, you would rather have a regular pin tuck or what people are used to seeing. This is a real easy way to create that type of pin tuck. And I'll show you how easy it is. The first thing that I did was I marked my fabric again, um, all my position points of where I wanted my tucks to be. I made sure to mark my center point. Uh, that will come in handy at the end and we'll see why later. So what I'm ready to do now is I'm ready to actually do my cording. And I've got a few pin tucks already started. So we'll just do one last corded pin tuck. What size double needle are you using? Um, I actually chose to use a 2.0 or 2.5 and the reason that I did that was because I have a wide decorative stitch. I normally like to use a 1.6 because I like a smaller pin tuck but I have to make sure that my pin tuck accommodates the width of my stitch. Okay, so I've got my pin tuck foot on and my 2.0 needle in the machine. And what I'm going to simply do is guide uh, the needles on either side of my center stitch on this decorative stitch. And That's wide, why I chose this decorative stitch because okay, that is okay. a perfect center point for me to guide uh, the and center how long of my is your stitch. Uh, 2.0. I chose 2 a tiny, stitch tiny, length. tiny okay. stitch length, okay. tiny stitch length for security because I do have um, cording 
in there. And if you notice, I'm not guiding my cording. And I'll show you There's in just a, a minute my little <laughs> magic. Okay. Okay. And again, I'm going to lock this at the end to make sure that that is secure. And this is my little magic. I have a plate that fits over my bobbin cover with a cord guide and my oh, cording simply fits right in there and it sits on my lap and I don't beautiful. have to worry about moving it back it's and forth. It's called E-A-S-Y. You got it, yes. <laughs> That's our favorite word, yes. isn't it, Chris? Yes. Fascinating. All right. So my last step that I need to do is, if you look at my piece, I didn't cut out my pattern piece. I basically traced around it. This is my center point. What I'm going to do is line the center point of my pattern up with my center marking and I'm going to go ahead and again trace the outer parameters of my pattern piece. I probably won't notice it on top but if I trace my side points I probably will have lost a couple of inches. And you can see there's a slight variation. Well, it just it, it pulls, pulls it, off. it sure exactly. It the pin so tuck is going to take in fabric and pull that in. So that's why it's wisest not to cut your pattern piece out until after you've done all of your pin tucks. And that's how easy it is. I mean, I made this camisole probably in three hours. Oh, I that's like how that. <laughs> I like that. I don't know oh, one. I don't know one person that has too much time. Do I, you? Uh, I don't. <laughs> I certainly don't have any time for. This for is sewing. so fascinating. I'd like to look at now. Then tell us about the little ribbon you put down in there. Oh uh, well, what I did was because I had created this center point, it left a big hole, and I thought, well, maybe I'll just do some pin tucks down the center. I tried that, and I didn't like them, so I actually did have to rip something out. So I went to the fabric store and found a decorative ribbon and just placed that down the center and I thought that that kind of pulled everything together a little bit. It really, really is and I, I just think it's so creative. Now tell us how you finish the edges. Um, I, well, I cheated. I bought... I love <laughs> cheating. Go ahead and tell us. <laughs> I bought double fold um, mini bias and I stitched really? it on by hand. Really? I didn't use the machine. I did stitch it on by hand. And the reason that I did that was because the curves are so tight. Mm -hmm. I felt on the on the um, the top of the camisole, I had a little bit more control with my hand stitching, making sure that I got around those curves. And okay. That's fascinating. And, and the, the and are, straps are just simple, double Satin ribbon, double-sided oh, satin ribbon, yeah. Pretty and easy exactly. are two very important things. And, and inexpensive, <laughs> too. Hey, we yeah, like that, too. exactly. And now then, I have a segment for you on the business of sewing. According to Lily and Dottie Walters of Walters International Speaking Bureau, one of the best ways in the world to get free publicity is to go to every civic club in town and give a little presentation. First of all, where do you find the names and addresses of the people with every civic club in town? Your chambers of commerce will usually have that information, and if you will tell them why you would like to have the names and addresses of the program chairman, they will usually give it to you. Plan 2 10-minute programs. Now, not programs like, oh my, here I am, I want to sell you some of the beautiful dresses I've made, but rather programs possibly about the history of sewing, the history of children's costume, or, or sewing through the generations, or how it has changed, or whatever you would like to, but something related to your sewing business. Now then, you've realized that a civic club has to have either 12 or 52 programs a year. So they're usually really looking for someone who can give a nice program. I would suggest taking my business cards. So at the end of the time, you can certainly hand out business cards and be available to talk if anyone would like to talk about sewing or has any questions about sewing. You have to remember that with civic club people, you really do have qualified buyers. So first of all, you're going to probably have people that will be interested in talking a little bit further about what it is that you're selling, especially if you've had some beautiful things to show them, worked very tastefully into your informational and educational program. Be sure you're available after your program for questions and just available, maybe have your pretty clothes hanging up so people can come by and say hello and always hand anyone who's interested a business card. And next, I have a silk ribbon stitch for you. Mm -hmm. 
I am so pleased to have as my guest today Beverly Sheldrick from New Zealand. Beverly has been with us on the show for several years now, and she certainly has done some beautiful designing for So Beautiful magazine. Beverly, thank you for coming back to be on the show. Oh, Martha, it's always a pleasure to be here with you. And today, um, I would like to show your viewers the second of the chrysanthemums that is on this robe that we have done here. Now, this one is really not, there's nothing difficult about it. It was just a matter of working a, fl a large flower to, in keeping with this Japanese, oh, sorry, Chinese um, style that we have. And of course, there's the one, as you can see, the one that is there that you're pointing. And then I have another one, a smaller one that I've done here, just so that the viewers can have a closer look. You will also see, viewers, that when I have done the sample one and the one that I'm going to do for you here, that I have made the colours a little more extreme than I have on the robe. Uh, you will see that I have uh, the darker edge around here. I have used a, a beautiful variegated ribbon, and of course, viewers, it is a, a seven millimetre ribbon that I'm using. Um, on, the, the, on the robe, I used a, a lavender variegation. In this one, I've used an orange variegation just to make it easier for you to see the difference and the different levels. Now, you will see here that I have started, I've got three circles drawn here. And again, just as we did in the other one, we have a, a slightly lopsided oval. So we have the outside one, the second one, and then this is the center. Now you'll see on this one that I have half completed here, that I have taken the outside color, carefully taken the stitches around, just fanning them just a little so that they just spread out like that and move the way round. The next one, the stitches you will see they actually go in between. You do not pierce this, these first lot of ribbon stitches that you have here. They've just gone in there like that and then again I've used these loose French knots for the centre. The buds are simply a French knot there and then a stitch either side. So I'll just go over this for you. Um, what I do want you to be aware of when you're doing these stitches is they do need to be flat. You don't want any twists in them. So just guide it through with your thumb like that. And here's another one coming up. You can see that the stitches are approximately an eighth of an inch apart and then the by the time they're fanned, they're getting closer to a quarter of an inch. But there they are, just sitting there. They're not tight on the ground, but they, again, they've just got a, a little bit of bounce. Now we're going to take our second color. That's this one, the variegated one that I've used. And with these lovely variegated threads that we can get now, we can add texture to our flowers in a way that we couldn't before. And I just think we can just achieve such beautiful results. Now this one, again, it's the same principle, that straight stitch and a little more bounce because now we're wanting to put height into it. And we'll go back and we'll do another one of these like this. Do remember when you're using seven millimeter ribbon, don't try to haul the ribbon through the silk or whatever fabric you're using. Uh, just pull it through slowly. The flowers, because they're big, they grow quickly, so you don't have to hurry with them. And then we'll just put that one there, like that. And we'll take our third color. And again, it's that loose, French knot like that, just pulling it so that it's just sitting there. I like to stop halfway with the needle. I find in that way I can then adjust just how tight I get these um, or how loose I get 
these French knots and it just gives you this lovely big center like that. You can see just how high up off the ground that one is sitting. Now we'll just move around here and we'll put one of these, these um, little buds that we have on the side. Again, French knot. That will not only give you that lovely center, but also it does, when I come to put these stitches that go over it, you will see that they are, it tends, helps to hold it up and really makes that central section just peep out between. Because you can see these side stitches are really quite high. And there they are. And then I would just put a straight stitch back to wherever I wanted to put the stalk. I don't normally put any leaves on it. Very simple but oh, effective. Beverly, this is just so beautiful. Thank you so very much for being here. That's a and pleasure. now I'd like to invite you to join me in my attic. My first antique piece I have for you today has so many interesting features. This is sort of the ultimate tuck dress. It has tucked pieces that go all the way out for the sleeves, tucks down the front. It has released tucks on the little panels and the center skirt, which I think are very pretty, with the rectangular pieces. And then there is a band that goes round and round. And that has one, two, three, four, five, five little pin tucks on the first one, six on the seven, on, on the second and five on the third. And isn't this eyelet pretty at the bottom of the dress? Let me give you a little hint. If you want to see if it is machine eyelet or handmade eyelet, you turn embroidery over to the back and you see if the little threads cross over at exactly the same place, that means it's machine, or if the threads cross over at different places. For our sewing from the heart today, I'm going to let you look at this beautiful little dress while I read the letter that came with it. This is from Myra Shiver from Brundage, Alabama. Dear Martha, you do not know me, but I feel I know you well. I enjoy your program every Saturday on PBS. It is great. I have some of your books also. I bought this vintage baby dress years ago when I collected dolls, and I thought the other day I should send this to Martha for her attic. So here it is. Some of the construction is not great, but the embroidery and handwork is. I made my granddaughter's picture in it when she was little. It is so fragile. Thank you for sharing all your wonderful knowledge with us that God has so richly blessed you with. Sincerely, Myra Shiver. Myra, thank you so much for sending this beautiful little dress to share with our viewers and, and to share with me on the attic. And I do so Thank you for watching our show every Saturday. One of the details that I would like to point out to you on this beautiful dress that Myra is sharing with our attic is the embroidery at the bottom and once again little eyelets. Now this is really interesting. All of the embroidery is by hand. Do you see the scallops that have been made with a hand satin stitch? Now, if you are so fortunate as to have a sewing machine which does a wide scallopy satin stitch, you can also use your sewing machine and have a stitch like this that will also attach the lace at the same time. And those tiny little eyelets are so beautiful. And of course, the white on white embroidery can be done on a sewing machine if you're so fortunate as to have one that does it. Myra, thank you for writing your letter and sending this little dress. And I would like to thank all of you for visiting with me in my sewing room today. Won't you join me next time? <music>